The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, and once again, it is time for Stars and Strikes doubles, and as we just did on Stars and Strikes at noon, we begin a brand new series with uh, five new teams, of course, in our men's doubles format here on Stars and Strikes doubles. And uh, if it's half as exciting as the last ladder was with the doubles and the scores we had, uh, we're in some, for some great bowling. Yeah, if you missed it last week, Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn were the winners of, uh, of that last double series, and there were some uh, terrific scores. Uh, and, of course, we always mentioned that sometimes the scores aren't quite as high in doubles, but that really hasn't been the case the last few weeks. Absolutely not. And those two bowlers have never been with us before, and uh, we got the same lineup today. All right, let's meet our uh, two teams so that you can get an idea who will be coming up this week on Stars and Strikes doubles. And a few minutes from now, we'll show you the rest of the series so that you will uh, have an idea who's coming up in the weeks ahead. First of all, our number five seated team. They are both uh, back for a second appearance uh, after being just here recently. First, Paul Willits from Framingham, Mass., and his partner from Natick, Tom O'Brien. Okay, and Tom comes in averaging 127, his roll-off score 623. Paul Willits averaging 119, his roll-off score 623. Wow, well, the roll-off scores were uh, a little bit lower, but very close this time around, and uh, not much difference between about third place and tenth place uh, in this particular roll-off series. We'll bring you up to date on that a little bit later on. Our number fourth seeded team is a very interesting story. Uh, remember, the bowlers enter the roll-off separately, not as doubles teams. They're not paired up until after the roll-off is completed. But yet, completely by accident, our number four seeded team for this series on Stars and Strikes doubles from Middleton, Mass., Paul Barassa, and from Pepperell, Mass., his brother Rick. Okay, and Paul comes in averaging 110, his roll-off score 626, and his brother Rick, one average of 115, and roll-off score 622. And, of course, uh, one of these teams, should they win four weeks in a row, would take the uh, series championship here on Stars and Strikes Doubles and move into the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. That'll be coming up in the spring. We'll tell you more about that. There are three other teams we want you to, uh, to know about, and we'll do all of that and get our bowling started here at Stars and Strikes Doubles right after we take this time out. Don't go away. All right, as promised, here is a look at our series and our bowlers upcoming here on Stars and Strikes Doubles for the next few weeks. Today, of course, our number five seeded team, Willits and O'Brien against the Barassa brothers, Paul and Rick. Next week, a couple of newcomers will join us, the team of Dave Kudamarsh and Dan Valcourt. Bob Mazur and Steve Tierney, our number two seeded team. And our number one seeded team, Mike Morgan from Lynn Mass, who of course has been here on many occasions, but not for quite a while. And he'll be teamed with Paul St. Pierre of Manchester, New Hampshire. They are in that number one spot with 13.03. And uh, they'll be looking forward to trying to defend that spot. But right now, we've got work to attend to before that. And Paul Willits will get us started here on lane 32 here at Park Place. Paul Willits and Tom O'Brien, our number five seated team. Well, I wonder if we'll have opening games like we had the first, uh, the opening match of the last ladder. <laughs> I guess we should tell him uh, the story about our scorekeeper, Sean. Paul a seven. Paul Willits, by the way, uh, just to get this in before we forget, Dan, uh, if he looks familiar, it's because he was just on, on Stars and Strikes last hour. Uh, we tape on different days, of course, but uh, Paul just, so happened that he qualified for the same series in both singles and doubles. Of course, Paul is hoping for a better fate than, uh, than just befell him on Candlepin Stars and Strikes when he lost to Glenn LeBlanc. Now, Rick Barassa. Right in the pocket. Nice eight pin drop, the five and the nine. Both Rick and Paul Barassa are making their first appearances with us here on Stars and Strikes. And right on it for the opening box spare. Plays the wood just to the left of the two pins and sweeps everything to the right, and that's what he has to do. And 
Now moving over to lane 31. And a nice looking first ball. Spinning it right into that 1-3 pocket and a chance for another one. Last box, 5-9, this time the 5 and the 8. A little tougher wood this time, out in front of the 5 and the 8 pins. Let's see, no problem though, two in a row. Pretty good debut. First two boxes on uh, stars and strikes, doubles, and he's got two marks. And now Tom O'Brien. It's kind of ironic, we have two brothers on one team. And on the other team, the Willits O'Brien team, we have guys from Framingham and Natick, neighboring towns. And in Massachusetts. Good thing this isn't a high school football game. <laughs> Framingham and Natick together. So one in the eight left for Tom O'Brien. Tall left-hander. He's waiting for that wood in the back. Yeah, we should uh, tell this story about Sean Grandy, who's keeping the big oh, scoreboard yes. for our fans and for the bowlers here at Park Place Lanes. It was pretty interesting. We were having trouble finding a scorekeeper. So uh, Sean is a friend of Doug's and comes from New York? Yes, originally. Yeah, so yes. he doesn't know Candlepin bowling. And he's really not a big bowling fan, so to speak. He's rapidly becoming one. He is so now, though, yeah. He didn't uh, really know how to score, so Doug gives him a quick lesson on the way up to the last taping, and Doug tells him, well, listen, this is a doubles taping, so the scores are uh, usually relatively low, so you won't have any problem. Well, if you follow our show, <laughs> you realize that the first two games he kept score for were 167 and a 165. <laughs> Nice shot, nine and 10 by Tom O'Brien. So he get a crash course right away. He should be fine today. <laughs> Ooh, lock to the right. Just the one fill on that spare. You're looking this, at Paul. Yep. Rick's brother, Paul Barassa. Of course, he was working on the spare left by his brother. Yeah, well, I had a feeling that if if Sean came up here, he would probably turn into a virtually an instant <laughs> Candlepin fan. And by God, that's exactly what happened. I think Sean maybe perhaps will have plans before too long to open up the first Candlepin Center in New York City. Big strike, strike. Oh, nice way to come back for Paul Barassa after struggling in that first box. Well, first time in front of the lights, I'll tell you that uh, anybody bowling, the first ball of any game is tough. And if you're bowling five boxes, I always think the first ball, the first frame, and the first ball, the second frame, after you sit down for a while. In this case, uh, these bowlers have to wait, what is it, six boxes before they get up again. And uh, so they're sitting down for quite a while. Right Paul Willits for the spare on the four horsemen. Just touches the head pin, needs a little help with the 10 pin, and gets it from the six pin, two marks in a row. Just missing the head pin. But he gets a decent drop of seven. No. Well, make it eight. Paul Willett's just happy that Glenn LeBlanc isn't here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Glenn, uh, Paul had a tough time. Of course, uh, you saw it probably last hour and make matters worse. Uh, Glenn just couldn't do anything wrong. Watch out. Mm. Almost kicked it forward. He missed the object pin, the head pin, but hit the wood and almost kicked the four pin forward. And it's 75 through six for the team of Willits and O'Brien. And the team of Barassa and Barassa is 46 with a strike working in the fourth. to the left, so disappointing three on the strike. And there was the ball he wanted. And you can see the difference in those two balls. If, if we could um, use it, those people who have VCRs can replay this one. If you watch those two boxes, the, 
the second ball of that box. He just kind of babied the ball, and the ball broke real sharp at the end. The last two, this one and the one before, finishes the last box, threw with a little more authority. And so the ball kind of straightens out for you. And he's right on his object pin, those two. Eight pin drop here, looking at the three and the six. Watch out, right on the cap. And a 10 box. So the difference is just seven. With the team of Willits and O'Brien in the lead. And here's Tom O'Brien. Tom was paired with, guess who, Glenn LeBlanc <laughs> in our last series. In fact, Tom and Glenn won two matches before being knocked off by our eventual champions, Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn, in that series championship. So uh, two guys that are very familiar to you. You saw Paul Willett's last hour, and you saw Tom O'Brien the last three weeks here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Oh, that was a good ball. Just everything flew around the five pin, nothing even touched it. Came close to knocking it down, but just looking at the five pin. No problem, 92 through eight, spare up in the eighth. There it is, good break for him. Just leaves himself the one, the two, and the four. Got to hurry. Not quite. Box number eight for the team of Barasa and Barasa. This is Paul. Just missing the head pin, trying to play that one, two, nine, and ten on the inside. And it'll be an eight box. Now Paul Willits to finish out the game for the team. Good first ball, but he leaves the six and the nine. That's a big eight pin fill on the spare though. That'll increase their lead by eight more. And yeah, let's see where the wood settles down. Well, I would say that he'd have to be high in the wood, almost directly at the six pin. Now well, it's gonna have to come off the wall. Nope. nope, neither the pin nor the ball. Hit it. Actually, I thought that pin jumped up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be a nine box. And 109. And nine again. 118 for the team of Willits and O'Brien. Now Rick Barassa. And let's see, may go. Nope, 10 pins still there. Not quite. 
And it's still there. So it's 95 through so, nine. Well, a mark here in the 10th could tighten things up considerably. The lead right now is 14. Right through the center. Oh, and through the middle. 101 for the team of Paul and Rick Barassa. 118 for Paul Willits and Tom O'Brien. They lead by 17, two games to go, and we'll have game two coming up in a moment on Stars and Strikes Doubles. And welcome back to Stars and Strikes Doubles. We just want to uh, take care of a, uh, a little housekeeping detail. We had uh, a scoring discrepancy on the computer, those of you who were Paying close attention uh, are aware. The sixth box for Paul Willits, the team of Willits and O'Brien, right there where the uh, asterisk is flashing. It was recorded earlier as a nine, but it is in fact a 10. And uh, so you now see the accurate score, 119 to 101. Willits and O'Brien with a 119, and the Barassa brothers with a 101, and we move into game two. Glad we got that straightened out. Go ahead, go ahead. No, you no, can, no. I'm you not can, gonna, I'm you not can gonna, give it to me. I'm not going to say a word. I just think it's pretty funny after that whole long story we did on Sean Grandy, and uh, <laughs> Sean was the only one that had it right. <laughs> he had it right here on the scoreboard at Park Place Lanes, and yeah, and we had it wrong. I always wondered why you had it wrong too. Well, because I, I mean, went, if I jump I, off a bridge, I, will you follow I went with me? You right. <laughs> <laughs> That'll teach me. <laughs> what was that? A spare? <laughs> no, that was a 10. <laughs> oh. As Paul Barassa leads it off for the team here in game two. Because I glanced over at your score, and Doug never makes a mistake, so I think oh. I have to be right. Never more than once a string. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, just missed cutting the three pin over into the four. And it's an eight box, 18 pair. I'd just like to mention one thing that's happening next weekend at Boutwell's Bowling Center in Concord, New Hampshire. Um, we're having a benefit tournament uh, for Peter Flynn. And uh, all the proceeds for the tournament will go to Peter Flynn Fund. Uh, well, at least half and the other half will go towards prize money. So if you're interested in watching, most of them will be the uh, WCBC Pro Bowlers. The shifts next Saturday will be 1.30 and 4.30, and there will also be a shift uh, next Sunday at 10 in the morning. So if you want to see some good bowling uh, for a great cause, um, just show up at Bowell's Bowling Center, North State Street in Concord, New Hampshire, next weekend. Two shifts on Saturday, 1.30 and 4.30, and 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Tom O'Brien with a big first ball there, and he carries the six pin for the strike. Strike up in the second. That's the first strike for the team of Willits and O'Brien. I guess um, we also should mention a lot of people call me asking about Peter, and Peter's doing as well as to be expected. He's got a long road to go, but uh, we're all hoping for the best, and this will be a great, uh, great thing we're doing, the Pro Bowlers. So. Also, one other uh, little item about Peter is that uh, Tim Lipke, of course, a good friend of Peter's and a good friend of the bowling community has started a fund to help Peter's family with the medical costs that they will incur for Peter's rehabilitation. And uh, if you're interested in making a donation uh, to the Peter Flynn Fund, you can make them in care of Tim Lipke at the Londonderry Bowling Center. And we'll give you that address in just a couple of minutes. Give you a chance to... Uh, Get a pen if you haven't already written down the information that Dan just gave you. Oh, nice shot. The nice triangle. Spare for Rick. Ten in the third. Spare up in the fourth. That's the fourth mark for the team of Paul and Rick Barassa. Now, Paul Willett's working on the strike left by his partner. 
And he's looking at the 3-6 on the right with the four pin. Paul Willits from Framingham. He and his wife Leslie have four children, Patrick, Lori, Stacy, and Anne Marie. Paul works as a teacher in the town of Holliston. Does most of his bowling at uh, the Sudbury Bowlerdrome, the Crowell Bowl in Stowe, and Metro West Lanes in Framingham. Great profession, teacher. Did you know I was a teacher at one time, Doug? I didn't know that. Yes, I was. About seven years before I got into the bowling business. Hmm. What did you teach? Science and social studies to fifth and sixth graders. I didn't know that. In Pittsfield, New Hampshire. Three, six, and ten for Paul. Yes. And he covers that for another spare. And we will go to a break with each team carrying a spare up in the fourth. Middle game, stars and strikes doubles. Don't go away. Paul Barassa to fill the spare in the fourth, left by, by his brother Rick. And it's got to hurry. Almost the half Worcester, but he steals a couple more. And leaves himself 1, 2, 6, 10. He's on the head pin. He's, well, to the left, so. This is the object pin. Paul does most of his bowling at the Acton Bowlerdrome in Acton and also at Lita Lanes in Nashua, which, by the way, is where the finals for this double series were held. And uh, Paul works as a printed circuit board designer for M-Tech Mass Design. By the way, he lives in Littleton. I believe <laughs> I mentioned at the top of the show it was Middleton. It's Littleton <laughs> Mass. The Acton Bowlerdrome. Friends of mine own that. Uh, Sharon and Bob Sunberg. In fact, Sharon was the first president of the ICBA, the International Canopin Association. Mm. And did an excellent job. Now a spare up for Tom O'Brien to fill, left by his partner. Before we uh, forget, Dan, let's give that address for uh, the Peter Flynn Fund. If you'd like to make a contribution to uh, help Peter's family to defray medical costs, just send them along to the Peter Flynn Fund, the Londonderry Bowling Center, Post Office Box 524, Orchard Park Drive, Londonderry, New Hampshire, 03053. I'll give that once again. Tom O'Brien works in box number six. It's the Peter Flynn Fund, the Londonderry Bowling Center, Post Office Box 524, Orchard Park Drive, Londonderry, New Hampshire, and the zip code is 03053. Tom O'Brien for the spare, and it won't happen. Ten box. 71 through six. It increases their lead to 27. I have to mention one of our new sponsors, too, to Stars and Strikes. Oh, oh. big strike. Strike for Rick Barassa in the seventh. Let me see the replay of that. Nice ball, one two pocket, nice and tight. The five and the eight, uh, five and the nine, last two to go. Looking for a double. Little. And uh, it's kind of close to me, too, is my next door neighbor. That's <laughs> Bob Mariano Jeep Pontiac. Glad to have them with us here on Stars and Strikes Doubles and on our regular Candlepin Stars and Strikes Noon Show. Six on the strike and a nine in the box for Rick Barassa. The five and the nine.
Ten. So that strike six takes six off the lead, and it's down to 21. Oh, well, it's in that one three pocket, and look what he left, is left with. Well, the wood may help. Well, he would like it out further towards the seven pin. He's almost going to have to clip the five pin clean. I don't think the ball can. No, the ball couldn't quite get over there. Bad angle that wood, as far as covering the seven pin, anyways. And the lead remains at 21 as Paul Barasa will now step up for the final two here in game two. Well, he got a nice break there. Could have been a spread eagle. It's still not a, what you call a makeable spare lead, but it's certainly better than having the spread eagle up there. Whoa, that close. <laughs> Great effort. Played it on the inside and got the 10 pin to come back across and almost clip the two. Ninety-seven through nine for a team of the Barassa brothers. And again, uh, those of you wondering, well, sure, I bet they always bowl together as a team. Well, this time it happened by accident. The uh, bowlers enter the Stars and Strikes doubles roll-offs as individual bowlers. And we take the top 10 finishers from the final roll-off, which, as I mentioned, this time was held at Lita Lanes in Nashua. And uh, thanks and hello to our good friend Ray Simino over at Lita Lanes for all of his support. And uh, then we take the top 10 bowlers and pair them up, one with 10, two with nine, three with eight, and so on. And it just so happened that uh, Paul and Rick Barasa finished fourth and seventh, respectively, which means they ended up paired together. Oh, what a shot. Yes. Oh, yes. Almost cut it in front of the seven pin. I thought it was going to just lay down in the channel and not knock the seven pin down right here. It wasn't for that second piece of wood. He would have cut it too much. It's a 100 through nine. That's the seventh mark for the team, and look out for the diamond. Wow, wow, that's tough to do. <laughs> that's three, tough five, to do. Three, five, six, and nine, and he takes out just the three pin. Of course, I've seen that happen before when ten pins are up. An eight and a 114. So the team of Tom O'Brien and Paul Willits adds seven pins to their lead in this middle game. It stands at 25, 233 to 208 after two. We've got game three upcoming on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Right now, Tom O'Brien is set to pick up the action here on Stars and Strikes Doubles with game three, with his team leading by 25 pins. Maybe give, you, give me a hint of uh, how to push the right buttons in the computer and stuff like that. <laughs> oh, big ball again is Tom looking for another strike. Had one earlier in the match. Well, it's going to be weeks now, weeks, maybe even months before I make another mistake. <laughs> go right on the limb. Everybody be watching at home. <laughs> Eight marks now for the team of Willits and O'Brien. 25 pin lead, that's what you want to do. Put a couple more marks up as quickly as you can, and this might come forward. Boy, that just gives you an indication of what can happen when you just barely clip the head pin here at Park Place Lanes. Tom just hung on there in the one three pocket. And a lot of the pins are still laying on the plate. You see three yep. of them in the channel there. Yep. And there's, there's half of them, five. It's two marks in a row. Going to make it real tough for the Barassa brothers. Really got to start stringing some marks together early. Rick is going to lead things off for the Barassa team here in the third game. By the way, if you're wondering, uh, yes, Tom O'Brien did finish that second game and then start the third one. But remember here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, the teams have the option of changing the order going into the third game. They have to maintain the order for the first two games and then uh, they can change it going into the third game. Depending on who's hot or maybe who feels that they've got a better shot or whoever is going well that particular day. 
So uh, Tom O'Brien and Rick Barrasso with Ooh. the two to start this game, and Rick misses a spare opportunity. Just slid by, cut to the head pin a little too fine, and it flew in front of the three pin, and he leaves himself just a nine frame. So they increase the lead by nine more, actually 10 more. 35 pins. That's a good ball. Wow. <laughs> Not a very good leave, but. But the wood should help. Just depends on which way it's going to fly here. Well, it looks to me the, the farthest piece of wood to the right, if he's at the red line, he should carry it. Right on, whoa, right around. Oh, my. Two tough breaks in a row. Boy, that could just as easily have been two spares for Rick Barassa. Instead, it's a pair of nine boxes, and the lead continues to grow. This is on a spare. And off to the left for just four. Next week's challengers, Dave Kudamash from Ware, New Hampshire, and Dan Valcourt from Newport, New Hampshire. Nine bucks for Paul Willits. Yeah, Dave Kudamash and Dan Valcourt will both be making their first Appearances with us next week. Big first ball this time for Paul Willits, leaving the seven pin. Five bowlers in this ladder have never been with us before. There's the spare in the fourth. Mark number 10 for the team. Just drove the ball straight through the wood to clear the seven pin out. That is a good ball. And again. Boy, it's a little thin leave. going through, though. Tough leave, the seven and the nine. You know, he's just going to have to play the wood and hopefully get some sidewall action over towards the seven pin. Not nice enough. <laughs> Not enough. So these three boxes vary with the first ball that both bowlers have thrown. Could easily been three marks in a row, but really didn't have a legitimate spare leave. In any one of those three boxes. And now they're up against another mark here in the fourth. And Paul will try and make something happen here. Right through the middle. And a seven box, we will take a break. The team of Willits and O'Brien in the lead on Stars and Strikes Doubles, week one of a new four-week series. Don't go away. Tom O'Brien coming up working on a mark. They've done some damage today. He and his teammate, Paul Willits. There's a little more damage. A nine drop on that spare leaves the five pin. And they're cruising right now. If not for the fact that they've had some relatively small fills on marks, they'd have a much better overall score. But they have had a lot of marks. Now 11. Tom O'Brien is the president and CEO of Venture Enterprises and also the general manager of A Connoisseur Corp Limousine Bus Company in Winchester, Mass. He's a busy guy. <laughs> oh, that's a great spare. The three and the 10, not much room for error there. Cuts it in the inside, watch the ball deflect off the three into the 10. Three marks in a row for the team of Willits and O'Brien. Now the Barassas need some marks. This is uh, funny how it goes. Now that ball was a little full in the head pin, but it was the best spare leave he's had, or they've had in this game. A six and a 10. Got to hurry. Yes. Covers it. That's the sixth mark for the team of Paul and Rick Barassa. This time, that's the hit, the light hit. 
Nine and let's see. All kinds of lumber in front. Let's see what it settles down because it's out in front and it's turned right now. Well, flattened out a little bit for him. Looks like he's just driving straight back. There it is. Puts up two in a row. Question is, is there enough time left now? Paul Willits comes up and he's still got a string of three marks in a row to work on. This will be the fill. Oh, right mm. on the head pin. Three. The one, the eight, and the nine. Spread eagle up there plus that five pin in the middle. Watch out. Now it's a spread eagle. Takes the seven. Better results this time, and he leaves the 10 pin. That seems to be the hit, the, the light hit, as opposed to the, the three quarters on the head pin and bury it in the pocket. The light hit seems to be reacting a little better for the bowlers. Got to hang on. Mm. No, it doesn't. Slides by. So two open frames. Barassa team to work on. Well, it could get a little more interesting here if uh, Paul Barassa is able to put some marks up here as he comes up for his final two. He's working on a spare right now. Off to the right, gets a nice kick though. The one, the eight, and the nine. Ironically, these are the three pins that Paul Willett just took out in this first ball. His first thought and only thought probably is, I've got to have the head pin. Well, it was better when that wood was up against it. Now it might be a little tougher. Let's see. Yes, oh, he nice got it. Shot. Very nice shot. Three marks in a row for the team. The head pin takes the nine pin, and the ball continues through for the eight. I gotta start thinking strikes now, though. No, right on the head pin, it's gonna be six. Ironic. He was no, on, it's no, be seven. no, it's going to be eight. <laughs> it's going to be eight. It's still falling. <laughs> Ironic, he was on the head pin that time and ended up with a almost a worse leave than the first time. I'm going to try to slide. No, it's going to slide by. He's going to try to slide that piece of wood into the 10 pin by hitting the 2 pin, but it didn't happen, so the string will stop at 3. That's what he wanted to do, and well, maybe it wasn't there anyway. The lead is 36 for the team of Willits and O'Brien with two boxes remaining. And those final two will be rolled by Tom O'Brien. Well, looks like the team made a good choice. They elected to have Tom lead off in this third game and he's rolled four marks in his four boxes so far. He's looking at the 410, piece, a couple pieces of wood. Nope. That's his first open in this third game. And it'll be a nine box. So 118 with one to go. They could close out the Barasa brothers with a mark here in the 10th. It's one you want to try to hit the six pin, snap the wood. So, it, there will be room for Rick Barasa when he comes up in the ninth and 10th, but he's gonna have to throw some strikes. 127 and a 360 for the team of Willits and O'Brien. That means that uh, Rick and Paul Barasa need a 152 to uh, tie it, which means... About five strikes. Yeah, Rick's got to throw a bunch of strikes here. And that'll do it. Three, six, seven left. Rick, by the way, uh, although he lives in Pepperell, this gets confusing because, of course, Paul lives in Littleton. Rick works for the Littleton Light Department. <laughs> uh, Rick and his wife Maria have three children, Sarah, Laura, and Amanda. That'll be an eight box in the ninth. And Rick will finish it out. 
So it'll be Tom O'Brien and Paul Willits returning next week to face Dave Kudermarsh and Dan Valcourt. As for Paul and Rick Barasa making their first appearance here on Stars and Strikes, they will split $150 as their fifth place share of the money. And Rick will be shooting at the one, two, and 10 as he'll try and add one more spare here in the 10th. Not to be. And an eight box for a 114. 322 for the team of Rick and Paul Barassa. The winners, Tom O'Brien and Paul Willits. They will return next week, and we will return with more of Stars and Strikes doubles after these words. And welcome back to Park Place Lanes and Stars and Strikes doubles here on the wins. We're going to uh, meet both teams right now and have a brief chat with each of them. We've got some uh, money to present as well, so how about a round of applause for Paul and Rick Barassa. They will come up first. And uh, got uh, a check for each one of you. Rick, there you go. And, uh, and Paul, for you, why don't you guys slide right in here so we can get you on camera. Congratulations. I know uh, the first time uh, up here is always the toughest, and uh, you guys just couldn't seem to get a break anywhere. It just seemed when the shots were there, the pins weren't falling, it seemed. Yeah, well, if, if you don't hit the object, you can't expect anything. Maybe next time. But what I want to know is, uh, do you guys bowl a lot together? I mean, is this kind of a common occurrence, or, or does this not happen very often? First uh, time. First time together, yeah. Is that first time you've ever bowled together on, in, in a situation like this? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. Normally, normally like to stay away from each other, I guess. Huh? Well, <laughs> he just took it up this year, so as far as TV roll-offs. Is that right? So he's way ahead of me now. Well, I guess that uh, you can you can offer some inspiration then to people who try and get on the show because uh, obviously it is difficult. And uh, having just tried this first year, congratulations, that's terrific. Thanks. Hey, you just got to go every time. Anytime <laughs> there's a roll-off, go. You got to keep <laughs> after it. That's right. Well, congratulations, both of you guys, for making Thank it, uh, and we hope to see you again real soon. So. Thanks very much, Paul and Rick Barassa making their first appearance here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. And now uh, a round of applause, if you will, for our winners. We have Paul Willits and we have Tom O'Brien coming up. And uh, for you guys, I know this is uh, especially gratifying, Tom and Paul. Uh, you guys uh, made the decision, first of all, to, to switch going into that third game and uh, it seemed to pay off. You had the marks going there in the third game. Oh, it's about time. The last time I was on the show, I couldn't have missed. This time I couldn't hit the side of a barn. But I told Paul, I said, you know, I feel it coming because I'm going to break out of this slump in the, out of the first two strings and, and the ball just worked the last string and gave Paul a lead but I have a great partner. So. Well, see now if you figure this out and you know what's going to happen, see that's your step ahead of the game already. Yeah, that's true. Paul, I wanna, I, I'm sure you, this must be especially gratifying for you because you were with us last hour here on, uh, on the singles program and, uh, and things went a lot better for you this time. It's a lot more fun to win <laughs> and that's for sure. But, uh, Tom's a good bowler, and uh, he's had the experience under pressure. That's why I wanted to have him finish it up for me. All right, well, you've got... Yeah, we did well as a team. We worked together pretty well. Well, that's what it's all about. Sometimes one guy is off a little bit, the other guy can pick him up, and that's, uh, that often happens in this doubles format because uh, there's not a lot of time to make things happen uh, in this particular format. Well, you guys beat a couple of newcomers here on today's show, and you'll have a chance against a couple more next week. Uh, Dave Kudermarsh and Dan Valcourt will be here. We'll be looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. Congratulations. All right, one win under their belts for... Uh, for uh, Tom O'Brien and Paul Willits. And now let's take a look at the ladder so that we can uh, fully bring you up to date on what will be coming up in these weeks ahead. Next week again, it'll be Dave Kudermarsh and Dan Valcourt. And uh, they also, as we mentioned, are newcomers on the program. And you see how close those roll-off scores were, just one pin separating these two teams, uh, the third and fourth place teams. And then, of course, uh, in two weeks, it'll be Bob Mazur and Steve Tierney. And then the following week, the number one seeds, Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre come in. But again, uh, newcomers, Dan, and we, we talk about this a lot. Uh, the first time is usually the toughest, and, uh, and next week will be a similar situation for, for Dave and Dan as they come in. Yeah, that's right. And um, I know Dave Kudermarsh bowls at the Concord Lanes, and he tries every roll-off, too. And he finally made the show, and those uh, the Barassa brothers made it. Uh, a couple of other new faces that we'll see in the ladder. And uh, it's open to everybody, and there's no cost as far as other than the five strings of bowling. So it's great just to rub elbows with some of these great bowlers. All right. And we're we're going to rub elbows with some more next week here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Don't forget, it all starts at noon with Candlepin Stars and Strikes, two full hours every Sunday here on The Winds. Until next Sunday, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 sports crew, Doug Brown, so long from Park Place Lane.